morning, everyone. It is my pleasure to be interviewing a successful English trader, entrepreneur, international speaker, and a philanthropist. Let us know more about this man, his expertise, and his advocacies. Good morning, Mr. Greg Stecker. Good morning. You've been in the trading business for 12 years now. We want to know how this successful career and venture started and why engage in the business of trading. Yeah, the industry you're referring to is the trader education business. I've been a currency trader for getting close to 20 years now. I know I, I, know I look younger than that, <laughs> but uh, it has been about 20 years. Uh, I guess I was pretty fortunate being in the right place at the right time 20 years ago um, to learn from some of the best currency traders in the world. In fact, my first job, I was an IT guy on one of the most highest performing currency trading floors in the world and my job was to support one of the biggest traders in the world um, and it was pure serendipity. Um, from there I took uh, a very small pot, I started with um, £5,000, I managed to turn it into £55,000 in about 11 months. Um, it really transpired into quite a roller coaster. So, over the next 10 years, um, I became a multimillionaire in my relatively early 20s. Uh, I quit my I worked on about eight trading floors around the world. I quit my job um, and I started trading from home um, in the European trading session, which starts at about 5.45, 6 o'clock in the morning. And I started teaching friends and family to trade. And very quickly, it led to me setting up a company, which today internationally is known as Learn to Trade. And Having this enormous success in your life, you want to give back, so a foundation was formed. Can you tell us something more about this Greg Secker Foundation? Yeah, we set the Greg Secker Foundation up five years ago. And I have with me today Marie Sawley. We're very privileged to have her out here from London. She's our, our coordinator of our foundation. Hello. So, uh, Hello. Hello. Marie's helping us yeah, do the projects out here. And, um, but originally, six years ago, we set the foundation up um, primarily uh, one big part of my life is motivational speaking and I speak on the circuit all over the world and I'm fortunate enough to spend time with really some of the most inspirational people um, that the planet has to offer. And I've got together with those and I said wouldn't it be great if we could do this for kids. And so we ran, um, I started the Global Youth Leadership Summit um, in 2010 where we take something like 2,000 children a year um, and we put them into a camp for a week, so a residential camp that we, we have in nature. We don't want it in schools. We originally did it in schools and we thought it would be better in nature. So we literally take a forest and we put a fence around it and we have a thousand tents for girls and about 50 security guards and a thousand <laughs> tents for boys. And then we fly in all the motivational speakers in the areas of health, wealth, leadership, contribution and relationships. And since then, um, Marie joined us and we decided that we would start to do a project out in this part of the world. Um, as you know, Typhoon Haiyan swept through the Philippines on November the 8th, 2013, which coincidentally is my, it's my son's birthday. And uh, on November the 9th, I came down and uh, my dear housekeeper and her husband, Rosario and Norman, um, were quite visibly upset, uh, obviously, at the atrocities that had occurred because their two brothers um, had lost their homes. And, um, and we decided right then and there that we should just get on an airplane and come out here and see if we could make a difference. And so, so we did exactly that. And we built a couple of houses, proper, you know, typhoon resistant homes, um, proper concrete homes, and they were big families, you know, four or five children each. And it was such a beautiful experience coming to the Philippines. It was my very first time here. I've always had a great relationship with uh, all the Filipino people I've met in the U United Kingdom. I like to call the Filipinos the Filipino army um, because they're always there to help and they're always very supportive and particularly um, take care of my family like they're, 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 they're their own. So I decided that um, it would only be fair to reciprocate that. And so we started all sorts of different and quite fun and quirky projects to raise money um, for the charity to fund this. So I that we would do a lot more trading and we would see if we could, uh, we could, we could build a village. And that's, uh, that's where Marie came to help us. And, Thank you uh, so much, Marie. <laughs> yeah, of course, it. it's, uh, it's all of Greg's work and all of his company's contributions. Without that, we would not be able to build even one house. So we're so grateful and Greg is so not only generous, but very passionate about this project and passionate about helping the Filipino people. Uh, so yeah, we're building a hundred homes in, in Lemery Lilo, uh, as well as a state-of-the-art multi-purpose training center. And we're very, very fortunate to be cooperating with the Central Philippine University in order to provide skills training for our beneficiaries. And we're looking into providing some livelihood programs as well. So we want, we're focusing on the sustainability 
And because Greg's passion is to empower people and to educate and help people, um, the skills training is a, is a very, very big part of that so that the community will be able to be more resilient and sustainable in the future. We don't want people just to survive, we really want them to thrive. So this isn't just a case of handing over the keys to 100 houses, this is about really setting up a community for longevity for the future. And that means empowering people not just with you know, mindset and skills and, 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 and life hacks, but also incubating some early businesses and seeing if we can't create some profit. It's really good. Um, why do you have this soft, you know, soft part for the Filipinos? Well, um, you probably can't see at home, but Offset is a gentleman who, who's married to um, uh, my housekeeper and uh, normally he's over there, you can't see him, but he's just Offset over there, <laughs> he's with me all the time. Um, him and his partner uh, take care of my family and, uh, and, I, and I, I think it should be reciprocated, I think, uh, and, I, and I felt, I've always felt there's a, a real genuine warmness from uh, the people in the Philippines and look, you know, um, where I live in the United Kingdom, there is no earthquakes. There's very few natural disasters. We live in a very fortuitous position. Where you are located here in the Philippines, it is a typhoon belt, and unfortunately, um, you know, people's lives do become devastated when you have things like Typhoon Yolanda hit your country. And so we felt that if we could do something, then we should do something. And, uh, and so uh, I, I really believe myself that the secret to living is giving, if you can make just a difference in one person's life. Okay, Ms. Marie, do you have any inspirational messages to our viewers? You know, everyone can make a change. Everyone can make a change to a person in their environment. You can make any person's life a little bit better, better by doing an act of kindness. So it's not really an inspiration, but it's more a call to action, uh, which would be today, do something nice for someone you meet because, you know, it could mean the world to them. All right, Mr. Greg, any inspirational messages to our viewers? You know, you get to affect somebody else's life. There's no great mystery as to why the people who give the most have the most. Um, and the very reason for that, of course, is they've, they've really achieved and mastered their own life in such a way where they recognize that to master your own life is to make somebody else's. And so, um, so I would leave that with you out there, for those who are watching. And uh, anybody who would love to get involved with our project, our website address is gregsecafoundation.com. We'd love to have you involved in any kind of way you'd like to contribute. It could be financially or coming and helping us uh, irrigate our farm or be a part of the project. <laughs> but uh, if you'd like to get in touch with us on that website, we'd be, we'd be entirely grateful. And thank you very much for, for taking the time to interview us and, and to, to, watch this, uh, to watch this footage.